thank you everyone for joining us for today's installment of the Knowledge and Nourishment webinars with President Serene Jones, which, where we will do bay, uh, debut Union's newly renovated Hastings Hall. We're so excited that you guys are joining us today. My name is Rita Walters. I'm the Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations here at Union Theological Seminary. And today I am delighted to be here with President Jones uh, Dean, and also Dean of Students, uh, Charlene Visconti, and Director of Housing and Campus Services, Michael O. Welcome to you all. We will begin our conversation between our three speakers. Uh, we will follow the conversation up with a Q&A. So you can actually start adding your uh, questions now into the chat, and we promise to try to get to all of them. We have about 30 minutes together where we'll have a conversation and then 15 minutes um, for uh, the chat, but you will get a tour of Hastings um, in the meantime. And now it is my absolute pleasure to turn it over to President Serene Jones. Hello everyone. I'm so happy to be talking to you today. Um, a special thanks to uh, Rita for all the work that went into this, uh, to Michael O and to Charlene. Um, we're doing an experiment. Uh, Union is uh, working remotely and we are all uh, wearing masks. Mine is right behind me because I'm the only person in the Bonhoeffer room right now, which at the end of the show, I will show you what it looks like in its remodeled form. But it's really exciting to let you see what has been created over this past year in Hastings with so much input from uh, students and faculty, the people who will be living here. Special thanks to Mike Maloney, who oversaw so much of the work that went in and all of the details. Um, an update on Union right now, we have about uh, 55 students living on campus. Um, that is nowhere near um, our optimal size for residents, but it does mean that during COVID, while we teach remotely, um, we have students now living in Hastings but with enough social distance that they can isolate or quarantine, should that be necessary? And boy, oh boy, do they have beautiful quarters to be in. So I'm gonna begin by showing you a slideshow um, so I don't have to walk through the halls um, of the different parts of Hastings. So here in the first slide, you see the new entrance, which replicates the original entrance uh, when the building was built with the beautiful uh, metal work at the top. Um, it is fully accessible. And as you move through these doors um, into the lobby, you'll see that we have a whole new uh, security system. Um, you can see here the desk and the two pillars next to the desk, both have swinging um, glass doors that you can open um, by using your swipe card. Um, and it's very important so we can control traffic coming in and out of Union. Um, you can also sign in at the desk. And then if you go through those glass um, entrance um, things, you can see right out into the quad and now um, you can turn to the right and see a hallway of the new Hastings Hall. Um, here you see the beautiful colors um, inside each of the doors going off of this hallway are brand new rooms comprised of dormitories, uh, suites, and studios. And in front of each door is this herringbone pattern. And each door will now be accessed by a swipe card that only the student living there will have access to. You also see below, um, if we can just go back one, you can see below um, the, the new uh, mail room. Now we go forward. Um, here we see a picture of a studio apartment. Um, when we polled students before we began construction, um, we heard from them a, a clear message that um, they would prefer to live in spaces where they had bathroom privacy and kitchen facilities. And so this new building is filled with many studio apartments, each of which has a small um, 
kitchen, as you can see in the middle picture, um, a private bathroom with uh, very beautiful um, appliances, and then all of the studios, um, suites, and dorm rooms will have furniture that comes with the room. Notice uh, we'll have all new air conditioning and heating, new air filtration systems, and we're most excited about the new windows, which open easily and close easily, and in this case, uh, give you a beautiful view onto Broadway. We've also heard from students that they would like to have community rooms where they can meet to do different kinds of projects. So in the upper left-hand corner, you see a community room, which is a beautiful state-of-the-art kitchen um, with multiple refrigerators and stoves. Um, it, it, it's a stunning kitchen. Um, you'll also see below that a community room that was designed to do art projects in. Um, we have a community room uh, designed for music. Um, and so each floor will have a different kind of community room with a different emphasis. Um, and the, the, the crowning piece of all of this in Hastings is what you'll see at the end of our, our discussion today. And that is the renovated Bonhoeffer room. So now that you have seen a, a slideshow of the different parts, um, I am going to take you live to some of these spaces. Um, we've set up our staff in different rooms and I wanna first take you to Kevin Bentley, who is the manager of alumni relations and individual giving. And he will give you a virtual tour of a studio apartment. Thank you, President Jones. This is, uh, the, I'm gonna show you the studio space. One of the new exciting things that you'll see is a lot more counter space that is here. This amazing refrigerator, a lot of open space. Um, bedroom, bed, looking out onto these amazing windows that are able to open and close shut, as President Jones said. Also here, desk wardrobe. Case and then your own bathroom. So yes, I feel like that's a really good view of this new and amazing space that we're really excited about. So back to you, President Jones. Thank you, Kevin. It makes me want to actually move in. It, they, it, they are so beautiful in terms of the wood finishes, the marble, the stone, the beautiful appliances. Um, now I'm going to switch over to the Dean of Students, uh, Charlene Visconti, who's going to speak to us about how these renovations, in ways that we could not have anticipated, has helped us better prepare to serve students during the pandemic. Thank you. Charlene? Thank you. Um, it, is, it is true. It's really quite amazing. The design of the building and the efficiency of the building has really allowed us to welcome all of our students back and to house them safely and fully in compliance with the many, many public health protocols that we're all responsible for um, meeting. So we have, so as, as it's already said, we have a number of studios and small shared suites and nearly all of our students are able to be in those, uh, uh, those apartments. And because of that, we're able to, if we needed to, quarantine students in place if it ever became necessary. We have some students on dormitory floors, but even the dormitories, the way they are set up and the, um, the number of bathrooms and kitchen facilities, we really just have family units on the dormitory floors, uh, very low density, and essentially they are operating as suites as well. So um, everyone is really quite safe and um, we haven't had any, we've had all, excuse me, I should say, we required all of our students to get tested um, for COVID before they um, came back when they arrived. And we're doing this in cooperation with Columbia Health. We have no positive cases. We have had to quarantine about a dozen students, but that was only 
because of travel restrictions put in by New York State. None of our students had um, significant contacts or any reason, any medical reason for having to be quarantined. And now going forward, we are, um, we are joining Columbia in um, the random surveillance testing of students. And so our students will be randomly tested throughout the semester. And uh, Columbia is right now enjoying a very, very, very low positive rate. And we have no positive cases on campus. So we're very pleased about that. Thank you, Charlene, for that update and for all the work you've done to make sure this is a safe campus. and. Um, also uh, working hard to attend to students' mental health and to find ways for us to connect with one another, even in this very isolating time. Um, I also just wanted to add that post-COVID, as we begin to imagine a post-COVID world, uh, this uh, building, Hastings, um, is designed to hold 155 students. Um, so we're very lucky this year we can keep it at such low capacity, but we look forward to the day when it's uh, full of students who are enjoying these spaces. Um, okay, Charlene, I'm going to leave you now and I'm going to shift to Michael O. Michael O. Hi, thank you. There, sir. Where are you speaking from? I, um, I am in the sixth floor student lounge. For those of you familiar with that, you will be shocked at how beautiful this room looks. Um, I'm really happy to be, be, be able to show you this. And I will try, I've been instructed to go slowly, but I tend not to do anything slowly. So I will do my best. Um, uh, for right now, um, the, the sixth floor lounge has been opened up a little bit. Um, and there's this little alcove right behind me and it's like a little seating nook. That's all it is. It's, um, it's quite lovely. I don't know if you, I'm in the way, if you can see it. So if you just want to sit here with a cup of coffee, read a book, or be on your laptop or whatever, it's really, it's really, really sweet. Um, the windows are great. You know, I also live in this building and I can tell you the windows really, really cut the sound on Broadway. It's amazing. Uh, I've, got, I've got the windows open right now because just to have airflow, so it's, you, it's gonna sound loud, but they work amazing. It's, it's just, it's great. And um, I show you, let me see, let me do this. Okay. So here, this, there are two, there are two workstations in this um, room right now. And so there's a complete kitchen, um, refrigerator, uh, stove, sink, um, cabinets on one side, and then are you all seeing this? If you go, there's another one on the other side with this huge island in the middle. So right now, I only have two student couples on this entire floor, this floor that holds, that has like 32 rooms. There are only two rooms in use so that each couple has their own kitchen. That is how safe we are being. And you know, I mean, the, the one great thing about this pandemic is that people will never live this well in this building again, students. So at least we're quality of life right now is fantastic in this building. If you go back here, there are these little, um, these little cabinets here for students to have individual storage. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, there you go. It's just, and it's so beautiful. And then there are two more refrigerators back here in this nook. Um, I'm going too fast, right? I make you all motion sick, I apologize. So that's the hallway. And we're gonna go around here. I'm gonna go forward. Here is the um, kitchen again, the, the other kitchen. And then this big, big island. You can see all the windows. It's just, fan it's a fantastic room. Um, you can keep social distance. You can easily have people in here and what we, we hope I've got, um, you can see up here helping me for moral support is one of our SLAs, Luke Estrada. <laughs> and you go here and if I, as I go towards him, uh, and that's where we have the windows open because I don't have a mask on, but he does. You can see we have this beautiful furniture. There is a little, let's see, where are we here? There's a counter here with these stools. Uh, the flooring is beautiful. Everything is just really, really 
really nice and um, and a lot of sunlight. You can see there are the students here already growing plants on the windows. So um, it's just really um, a wonderful way, I think, to live and to live in the city. And we're really excited um, with this renovation. Thank you, Michael O. And also thank you for all of the energy and time and planning that you put in to this renovation and to making all of the student housing at Union safe and uh, helping all of the students move in and move out as they did last spring. Um, it's quite a task and you've done it with such great uh, love and care. We're very thankful for that. Um, and now we're gonna turn to uh, the last room and that's the room that I am sitting in. Um, I am sitting on a beautiful new couch um, in the renovated Bonhoeffer room. Um, as many of you know, this is the room that when Dietrich Bonhoeffer was at Union, uh, his, um, it was divided into different segments and his desk was in here. This was where he studied. Um, we used to have a lot of um, archives of Bonhoeffer in this room. Those have now been moved to the Stewart room and the Bonhoeffer room has become a beautiful student lounge. Um, it has been designed to allow for everything from doing yoga at one end of the room um, to uh, sitting at uh, tables and studying at the other end of the room or sitting right where I am right now and watching uh, the presidential debates tonight. If the television was there, it's not there yet. But um, we're very excited about this being a major gathering space uh, for Union students. The furniture is lovely um, and the spirit and history of this room still resonates. Um, I also want to just take a moment and say thank you again um, to all of the donors who participated in the renovation in 1988 um, of Hastings Hall. Um, we built upon those renovations and couldn't have done this uh, today um, without that support. Um, and for all those who have been a part of the creation of this amazing um, entire building uh, centered around healthy, ecologically conscious, community oriented, and study center living space. It's remarkable. So I'm gonna turn it over to Rita now, um, who will open it up for uh, questions and conversation. Great, thank you, Serene. I'm gonna give a little bit of a tour, if I can just turn it just a bit here. So bear with me for a moment, I'm gonna turn the camera around and See. Oh, great. I'm going to just back up really slowly so you guys can really get a look at the room from a distance. So you'll see Serene fading out of the camera. <laughs> but yeah. Just backing up. So here's the table that Serene was just mentioning. Um, and the fixtures are absolutely beautiful. And the couch is just incredible. I'm going to turn just a little bit to see that, to try not to make anyone dizzy. I'm sorry. I think this is part of our assignment. Of oh, okay, we need to turn this around again. Okay, okay. I think we're getting some help here. Voila. Okay, does that. Ah, oh, okay. So, okay. So you guys by now understand that I'm not a photographer. So thank you, Kevin. Okay. So now I think you're seeing exactly what you should be seeing. This is the part of the job that's other duties as assigned. Okay. So here I'm going pretty slowly. So again, as we're waiting and you're watching this, just go ahead and add some questions to the chat. 
I'm going to show you the window now and the view. There's construction right outside of our window. You may actually hear some of that now. Just spin a little so you can see some more of the lights here. Okay, so now we're coming up to the space where the television will be installed. So if not for tonight's debate, maybe for the night of the election. Now we're back and there's Serene and there's that wonderful couch she's sitting on. Thank you guys and thank you again, Kevin, for helping me out here. I'm going to turn this back over to Serena and then we're going to get right to your questions. So I, I guess I can go with the first question. What renovations are you most excited for? I mean, hmm, pick something out. I think it's the windows. For me, it's the windows. Um, because if you lived in Hastings Hall, you lived on Broadway, you got all that beautiful sun, but you also got all the noise. And um, the windows are just such a, the new windows are just such a great addition to this. And they look great on the inside and on the outside too. So that's what I would say, the windows. So we do answer that same question. What are you most excited for? Um, I'm most excited about the part that we're not even looking at today, but in the basement of this building is all of the mechanical systems for the entire campus. And for anyone who's been down there, it's like a dungeon um, with equipment that's been there for over 110 years. Um, all of that equipment is now gone and it's filled with, um, uh, state-of-the-art digital technology that will now be running the entire campus in terms of the internet, the heating, the cooling, the water, the electrical. Um, and that is going to make such a difference to life, not just in Hastings, but throughout the campus. So we have a new question here also. I just stepped into the other room, so I took off my mask. I can take um, my mask off. Ask Serene to give a short overview of how the renovation came together and why it's so important. Um, so the, this uh, renovation project was long in the planning. Um, it uh, began with board conversations, uh, board of trustees almost eight years ago. Um, when um, we were notified by the uh, city of New York that our facades um, were in need of very significant repair. Um, we investigated the facades of Union and then did a thorough overview of all of the campus facilities and found that uh, we really reached a breaking point with respect to the inhabitability of the campus. And so uh, we began the process of working with architects to um, redesign uh, the whole campus um, and the first of those steps and the most complicated of those steps was redesigning Hastings and the basement and all of the um, electrical equipment um, that runs the campus. Uh, we're excited to start phase two, um, which will be a cloister walk that connects um, Hastings um, to um, just north of James Chapel. Um, we're going to have a new building going up in the northwest quadrant of the um, courtyard. And in the base of that building will be a room, a, a floor of classrooms and offices. Um, and above that will be uh, six floors of faculty housing. Um, so all of the faculty will be moving out of the Gifford and onto uh, brand new faculty apartments on campus. 
Um, if you turn the corner from the cloister walk and go under James Chapel, um, what we call the undercroft of James Chapel, um, we'll have a new a small chapel, um, a dining hall, um, and a kitchen. Um, and then you'll turn the corner again for those of you who are here. And we're still in the process of um, building out the design um, for Auburn and Admin, which will be the last piece of the design process. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. We have another question here from Michael, who is asking, what was the result of changing building where Lampman Chapel was? So what was the result of changing the building, I think he meant here, where the Lampman Chapel was? Can't, I, I, I can't hear. Can you say that again? Sure. Uh, what was the result of, the, of changing buildings or building where Lampman Chapel was? So um, we had a wonderful, very powerful and poignant um, decommissioning service for Lampman Chapel, uh, which has been important to so many generations of Union students. Um, we had that uh, two years ago, and we took uh, many pieces of Lapman Chapel, um, including the stained glass windows, and moved them to those two classrooms um, that you have to sort of step down to off of the area that's called the pit. So we now have um, a very small version of Lapman Chapel um, that um, doesn't compare to the chapel in its glory, um, but we still have to go in the renovation, the construction of a new small chapel in which these windows will be present in which uh, many of the architectural elements in Latin will be present, uh, but will also be an updated space conducive to today's worship. I mean, can you right now, one, one last thing right now, it's a very strange thing because we're remote. And so um, most of the time, James Chapel and the uh, provisional uh, Latman Chapel are sadly empty uh, because the campus is, is, is in shutdown. Thank you, Sue. Uh, Michael, question for you. I know that most of our students are um, remote, um, as Serene has mentioned. But you still are doing things to build community for those students who are on campus. Can you talk a little bit about that and exactly what's happening today? It's Thursday. You're right. Today is community lunch. Um, so what's going on right now? Um, and we're having it, if those of you remember, the terrace behind um, Admin 116 uh, was underused. And it's not underused now. That is our our, our, our main space to gather outdoors safely. We put up lights and we're going to, um, there are a lot of tables and chairs out there safely, six feet apart. And uh, we're, we're having um, all those large heat, heating elements installed so we need to when the weather gets colder. So we're doing that. Uh, we've been doing occasional um, Wednesday or Thursday evening social gatherings, um, providing the seminars provided uh, a grab and go type dinner for students and uh, we've, we've had some, you know, drinks, beer and wine and, and soft drinks for people to, um, to gather. Uh, we'll probably do that like every other week, every third week, something like that. And um, I'm really excited about this building being completed because with the Bonhoeffer room and with these series of lounges, there are, there's, as Serena said, there's a lounge on every single floor here. Um, as well as, you know, there's the first floor lounge in McGifford. We feel that with windows open and masks on, we're, whatever, um, that we can socially safely gather um, between three and eight people or whatever. And so we're going to, we're creating um, uh, programming for, to encourage students to gather, even if it's just, um, you know, people want to gather for, uh, to get study groups together. We've also made classrooms available for students to gather with windows open and, you know, that the whole thing is a, to make sure that people feel as safe as possible and yet still have this ability to come together. Um, and I can see students have already done that. It's been nice to see some new students um, kind of forming their, their groups and um, makes me feel better um, to see that. But we are doing that and we have sign up sheets for all these things. And that's a big part of what the SLAs will be helping with is, is our programming. So we have begun that, we're gonna continue that and we're excited. Um, right now we're talking about what's it gonna be like to have 
Friendsgiving, for Thanksgiving, right? How can we safely do that um, for students? Okay, wonderful. We'll be on the lookout for that because that sounds really exciting. Uh, Michael, thank you. Um, so we do have another question here. Um, so Michael, again, and the old building where the chapel was, I think this is, Serene, this is a sort of a, um, a part two of this first question. The, the, in the old building where the chapel was, is the question. Um, so Michael, do you wanna make that a little bit clearer for us, if you may? Um, so I think he initially asked about um, the results of the changing building with Lampton Chapel. So I think he's also sort of following that up with in the old building where the chapel was. So what's happening with the old building? Oh, okay. Um, so the, um, the social hall and the refectory are going to, um, the refectory is still going to be, it's under renovation right now, is still going to be uh, able to be used by union, but will also be incorporated into the new building. Um, and what was the old kitchen, the section of, um, you know, just north of the social hall and refectory, um, there was an entrance, that's where Latman Chapel was, and above that was the old kitchen, the three-story kitchen, I don't know if you were in it, that <clears throat> is going to be the new entrance into the building that will be in the northwest quadrant. Um, so from the outside, um, it will, the facade of Union will still look the same, um, but you'll have a door there where you enter into the new building. And if I could add, if I may, Serene, we, we have kept, as you, Serene had said, this small chapel, it's quite lovely, it's very small, but we've kept the stained glass windows and we've lit them behind. So actually they look better, in my opinion, than they've looked when they were in the, in the place. In the place where you can see the detail better, it's beautiful. And we've also kept the lamps that were hanging in there and they're also installed in this small chapel. Um, so it's, it's actually, it's not Lampman Chapel, but it's really a, a lovely space that has respected its past, I, in my opinion. So quite lovely. And you should, if you have a chance to ever come here, you should see it while it's there. Thank you. Thank you. Charlene, um, there's been talk on the news and other places about a possible second wave of COVID. How are you preparing our students and our community in the event of a second wave? And if you want to answer as well as Michael. It's, it's a very good question. Um, so I think that all of us, the way we can be prepared um, is to follow the public health protocols, right? And so we are now asking students to attest to their health every day. People have to complete a, the community compact and, a, and a, a learning module about social distancing so that they can enter the campus and use the campus and enter the residence hall as well. Um, I think that the, um, the best way to do this is with student ambassadors. Um, we're not being punitive about this. We have found that our students actually are amazingly compliant um, in follow and caring for themselves and for each other around these protocols. And um, we're just now, just this week, I started um, looking into some uh, additional training for our students that we can do through Columbia Health so that they learn more about all of the issues um, around COVID and how they can keep themselves safe. Um, I think everyone should also know that all of, um, you may not be aware that all of the universities and including Union have to report daily to the Department of Health. So um, we're able to see um, exactly what's going on in our community. And um, I believe, um, I feel very strongly that if there is an uptick, um, we will be able to put the right protocols in place to, um, to either to alleviate it or tamp it down. So we still meet regularly within the community and all of our affiliates weekly actually, and all of this information is reviewed. So I guess the short answer is monitoring monitoring as long as we continue to monitor and as long as our students stay as um, caring and compliant as they are, I think we will weather this um, second wave. I really do. Yeah, and I would just add that we have um, taken that into account in how we've, how we've assigned housing to students here on campus. Exactly. In that everyone, it, it's, you know, the, the fear is that people are too isolated, right? 
is that everybody that's in a two room suite, unless they're a couple, there's only one person in that two room suite. Um, so most people are either in a two room suite where there's only one person in the bathroom and kitchen or in a studio where they're by themselves, their own bathroom and kitchen. And the dorm floors, as I've already said, on the sixth floor, there are only two couples here. So out of 32 rooms, there are four people. Each couple has their own bathroom. Um, and that goes um, the same in McGifford, where the density on the um, dorm floors is very low. And then everybody else, most people are in, are in one bedroom apartments in the studios in McGifford Hall. So we feel that if, if we're prepared um, that if we have to quarantine people, most pe almost everybody can stay right where they are in quarantine. And then we're here to help, um, to help make sure that, you know, they get deliveries to them and, and we still have the food pantry. And we've started now once a month providing fresh fruit and vegetables um, that we just had that last week. So I, I believe we have a system in place that will keep people as safe as we possibly can control. Wonderful, thank you. And just here, I think the panelists and the attendees have had a chance to read this, but in case you have not, um, this is from Kristen. One of our classmates was given permission to very safely play the piano in James Memorial Chapel for our first year online chapel service Tuesday. And it was so, so special. Even from a distance, we can't wait to be on campus next academic year. Mm. I think that really is really the sentiment, how all of us feel, Kristen. So thank you so much um, for really voicing that um, on behalf of all of us here in this community. It really is exciting. So many wonderful things are continuing to happen, both on site as well as online. Um, Serene, do you want to give a little bit of a, we have a few minutes left, about one or two minutes. Um, do you want to give a little bit of an overview and update, um, sort of adding to uh, Kirsten's um, statement? Um, I'm actually having a hard time hearing uh, because of all the construction that's going on for the rest of the campus renovation. Right. Um, but I think you asked me if I had any final words. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank everyone for being with us today. Um, I want to thank the faculty um, for how accommodating they've been during this difficult time of COVID. Um, as you know, Union is um, learning completely remotely this fall. And uh, we have, um, in response to the possibility of a second wave, um, extended remote learning until June 2021. We have yet to figure out what that means for graduation, but we'll let everyone know. Um, but uh, the spirit of Union is still uh, remarkably strong. Um, and you can feel that in the way that people are pulling together uh, to get us through this very difficult period, not just uh, in terms of COVID, but um, the uh, rising up of a national anti-Black violence movement and movement for social justice and uh, supporting each other as we go through what I call the dark storm clouds of this presidential election. Um, you, can, you can feel us all holding hands, uh, even though we can't touch each other. Thank so thank you. you. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, Charlene, Michael, do you wanna have a last word? Oh, I think Charlene, I think you're muted. I think I just wanna say that we have room for more students on campus. And um, it would be wonderful to welcome more of you back um, in January when, um, when the spring semester starts and the weather is starting, going to start to get nice and uh, we can use a lot of outdoor space. So um, we're all looking forward to seeing more of, more of our students on campus. Thanks for that. Charlene, I mean, it's, it's great to, um, to have the students that are here right now. It's wonderful, and uh, as more of you feel um, comfortable on being on campus, we're ready to receive you. Um, so, all the best. With open arms. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Serene, thank you so much. You're always so wonderful to do these knowledge and nourishments for, uh, um, for all of our community. So on behalf of all of us, we say thank you. To Michael and to, our Char and to Charlene, Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for showing off this beautiful, beautiful space. 
And as Serene had so eloquently mentioned to all of us, there are so many people behind the scenes that have made this possible. Uh, yes, the renovation of 1988, the renovation of 1973, and now this newest renovation. Um, and I know one of the things that Serene is very mindful of is that there was some of these ideas that came to fruition are students who were here who have now since graduated. But we want you to know that your ideas and your input was valued and appreciated and absolutely implemented. So we hope you too, as our alumni, that you come back and join us again when, we're, when we can safely gather once again. Um, we look forward to your presence. You may not be what it is meant to be until you come back to this place and say hello once again. Um, and I also wanted to add that um, on November 4th will be our next knowledge and nourishment. And November 4th comes the day after November 3rd, which is the day after the election. So Serene will be leading us in another knowledge and nourishment as we process what November 3rd, what will happen on November 3rd. So our fingers are crossed and in prayerful submission um, that light will be reflected. Um, and so perhaps we can come together and be in joyous celebration. But whatever the case is, um, we know that there will be a word from Serene, from Kelly, from Fred, from Pamela. And we really hope that you all are able to join us. Go right over to uh, www.utsnyc.edu uh, where you can register. And we really hope to have a big crowd. As, as Serene said, we'll be holding hands um, even virtually. So please join us. Thank you all for being here today. We so appreciate it. Kevin, thank you again for getting that camera right. <laughs> and um, again, other duties as a sign. Thank you for everybody who really stepped up in such a, a great way to make this happen. We hope you enjoyed the tour. We cannot wait to see you in person. Bye-bye.